harsh. Okay, to start again there. Um, this morning's topic is lecture capture. We're, uh, what we're doing right now, we are capturing this, since I hit the record button on Zoom, uh, capturing this for later playback. We'll put this online along with uh, the recordings of all of the uh, uh, in-service flex sessions that we're going to be doing the rest of the uh, spring term here. Indeed, we'll probably do this indefinitely. And this, of course, is something you can do in your own classroom. And that's the point of this uh, seminar today, is how you can do that, how you can fix it so that your students can see you and hear you and see your instructional materials that you use, your visuals that you use in class, um, and uh, on demand. How you can record that, put it online, and have it available for your students anytime they want to watch it. This is one of the most popular instructional technologies with students. Students love lecture capture for a variety of reasons. Of course, there are lots of good pedagogical reasons to capture your lectures. Uh, there's the student who's uh, sick that day or on a trip or just didn't get out of bed. That student can go back, and if you do it, decent job of lecture capture, they can get the entire lecture, not just borrow the notes from someone, but actually see, hear, experience not only your presentation, but the give and take that you have in class that's, that distinguishes you know, that live class, the energy and the engagement that you get in that live class session that you don't get in, um, in, a, record, in a canned recording where there was no studio audience. This, that works. That's why all the famous sitcoms of the 80s and 90s recorded the program with a studio audience present, because it generated an energy in the actors and in the whole process that just didn't exist when they were just doing it on a closed soundstage. Uh, so that's a, that's a real benefit for a student who just can't attend for some reason. Then, of course, there's the student who just wants to go back over, or the student who did attend, who just wants to go back over something that they missed or that, that just didn't stick that first time around in the lecture. Lord knows there weren't too many concepts that were presented to me when I was sitting in a classroom that stuck the first time. And I would have loved to have been able to go back over that chemistry problem a few times before, <laughs> before I got into the next class period. Um, and this provides that opportunity for them to do that. Not only can they go back and view the whole lecture, of course, but they can go back and they can just TiVo through the lecture to the point that they want to uh, review, and they can review just that. And they can fast forward past the dull parts. The, uh, that's another good possibility. Or another good reason to do it. Another reason to capture lectures, of course, is what we call inverted instruction. Let me get this door out of the way here. Inverted instruction, flipping the class. Um, you can record lectures. The students can watch the lectures before they come in, and by gum, you can spend your class time doing something more than acting like a VCR and giving a, uh, a lecture that you've given a thousand times. Uh, I had a colleague come to me once in an extremely depressed state. And he said to me, I've just computed the number of times I have to give this lecture in English 101 before I die. And I'm extremely depressed about it. <laughs> well, with lecture capture, the answer to that question can be once more. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. I hope Jennifer's hearing us. 
Everything going okay? Jennifer, can you give us a nod if you're hearing us? We see you very nicely. Okay. I we'll hope that's what uh, let's see. Let me use the chat tool there. Try that. That should have popped up for Jennifer for everyone actually at this point. Okay, and um, you can spend your time in class on, well, the classic uh, 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 modality of flipped classrooms or inverted instruction, of course, is that you do the homework in class, and you do the basic information delivery, the lecturing, if you will, online. Uh, this allowed, because the theory being that uh, where the students really learn is where they actively apply what you, the information that you've given to them in, uh, in class or in your lecture. But the real learning takes place when they're actively engaged with that uh, information and applying it in uh, homework projects, problems, activities of some sort. And for them to have you there physically present when they're doing that so that you can go around and clear up misconceptions or help them over a rough spot or whatever. You just, you make, the theory of inverted instruction is that you make so much better use of the time that you have face to face with your students than you do when you're just lecturing to them in class. And it's a, uh, it's a, pedagogy that's gaining more and more popularity. It's, it's not like it's a brand new idea. We've done uh, variations on that for a long time in many cases. But the technology that uh, has just gotten to the point where we can do so much better of a job presenting information to the students prior to coming to class, uh, we don't have to just, just say read the chapter in the textbook, though that's still an important thing for them to do, but uh, this enriches that, or can enrich that tremendously. And what I hope I'm going to convince you of today is that it ain't hard to do. It doesn't really require much, if any, more effort than you are going to have to spend lecturing anyway. Might as well uh, get you know, a value added return on that lecture by putting it online and making it uh, available to all of your all of your students. There is one concern about that that comes up a lot, however. Anybody think what that is? Remember you can unmute at any time just clicking on a little microphone down the lower left hand corner. And if unless We've got a bunch of noise in the background or something like that. Um, uh, you can just leave your mic open if you want to. If we have a problem, I can always go in and mute you if, if something starts, the dog starts barking in the background or something. But the concern that everybody has about doing this and putting your lectures online is that, well, if they know I'm going to do that, why would they show up? Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Hey, Sushila, welcome. Um, and that's not an entirely unfounded concern. There have been a number of studies on that. And hey, Sushila. Hi, how are you? Sorry for being late. Oh, not at all. It's great to have you, and we're hearing you fine and seeing you fine. Okay. Um, and please, you all jump in. This, I know the tendency is when you're. Uh, you're at home, you're in your office, you're on a remote link, you know, get comfortable, it really doesn't feel like you're in the room. No, we, we want this to be, you know, energy. And interrupt me. I don't care. 
I've been doing this for 45 years. <laughs> okay. And it's generally a mercy if somebody interrupts me, okay? And everybody goes, oh, thank God. He's not, uh, he's not talking for a minute. So please don't hesitate to jump in. Because the best part of these things is a give and take. Right. And I'm trying, I want to convince you here that we can just get just as much give and take online like this. As a matter of fact, it, as it just so happens, every one of our attendees this morning is online. Good. The only person sitting in the room here with me is, uh, is our intern, Michael. Okay. You know, let me show you Michael. There's Michael down at the end waving at you. There. Hi, Michael. <laughs> but um, <laughs> probably rather look at the empty chairs than me, but I guess I'll. The worst part of this is I have to look at me while I'm doing this too. But uh, the, um, the energy that you can get in a, in a live conference like this can be very very equivalent to what you get in a, in, a, in a room. In some ways, it's better because you can see people better. And so, Sheila, I can see you a lot better, and uh, Leslie, the two of NROM, the folks who have their uh, cameras on. I can see you better than I could if you're down at the other end of the classroom. Right. Especially with my eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> and I can hear you better. I think that's important to me. In a large classroom, sometimes I can't hear them at the back of the class. I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> but with this, you can hear them. You can see them. There's a, um, let me show you this, which is, all of this is related to lecture capture because the tool we're using right now, Zoom, is one of the tools we're going to talk, of, talk about for lecture capture today. Okay. Um, if you mouse over the video window again, that's how you control Zoom. If you just mouse over me, you'll see a, an option in the a little button in the upper right that says gallery view. Right. Click that and see what you see. Oh, so now I see everybody? See everybody. And this is what I, and this is, that's the view I have up on my screen right now so that I can see you all, and this is, you know, one of the things that people always complain about with synchronous di distance education like this is that they, in many tools, they can't see the class, they can't see their students. So you don't know if half of them are asleep or, uh, you know, somebody's in the back, or you can't see that look on that face that says, they're confused. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. Better back up and try something different. Um, you know, that, that interaction that you get in a live classroom is so important in a, in a synchronous interaction, a live lecture, whatever. And um, this Zoom will give that to you. It will display up to 25 video thumbnails at a time. Okay. Um, the smaller they get, you know, the more you have, the smaller they get, and the, the jerkier the video gets. But you can still see, you know, if somebody's sitting there with a, a gobsmacked look on their face, you can still see that. So, and, and you know, yeah, and I can see, I can see Sushila nodding, so I know that she's, she's in there, I see Leslie smiling. It gives, you know, it, it gives you that energy, that... <laughs> Think of that uh, synergy that you get right. in a live classroom, and your participants can each individually be anywhere in the world. This thing has worldwide reach. This could be somebody uh, uh, deployed on a military base in Afghanistan. Right. Not a, not an unlikely scenario for us. Right. And um, the, they can be just as engaged in it as somebody sitting in the classroom so, or sitting physically in front of you. Though, as you saw from the Michael's wave there, the, uh, you can also have a live group in front of you. And 
again, I hope to convince you that the additional uh, cognitive load on you is just minimal, especially the second time you do it. First time, <laughs> it's, right. yeah, you know, everything the first time. Is, right. But the second time, and after that, you just fire it up and you sort of forget about it. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're so going to see that. I yeah. have a question, though. Please, that's what I want. Yes. So why are um, so? For example, um, I see Leslie, but there there is a red line going across her. Is that her microwave? I mean, not microwave. Microphone. Microphone. Yeah, Leslie's muted. Okay. So if uh, uh, she can unmute herself at any time, there's a uh, there's a little. If you mouse over the window, there's there's a little. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. I have a dog and gardeners in the background, so I. Oh, okay. Be a good thing. <laughs> okay. Okay, I just wondered about that. Okay. Yeah, so you can turn your sound on and off at any time, and the other folks you see that are just uh, stylized icons. Uh huh. Uh, either don't have a webcam, and you don't have to have a webcam to participate okay. as, a, as a student. Okay. Or even as an instructor, if you prefer. I, I know at least one instructor who is pathologically disinclined to have herself photographed. Right. And if you don't want them to see you, you can just click that little camera down the lower left-hand corner and turn it off. Okay. On and off, on and off, whenever you wish. So, Hi, Donna. I saw you for a couple of seconds there. <laughs> Hi, Shashila. How are you? Good. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay. That's the kind you can really have a rich two-way interaction, just as you can in a, in a live classroom. Mm -hmm. Maybe more, because people are actually probably more um, comfortable sitting at home. Or for God's sake, sitting in their car somewhere. This um, uh, system, Zoom, as we'll talk about in the second half of the presentation, works just as well on an iPad. Oh. Matter of fact, Leslie, I think it's. Are you still on your iPad, Leslie? Yep. Oh, okay. Works okay. just as well on an iPad or even a phone. Uh -huh. I attended a lot of Zoom meetings for my phone, and you can even, all right, here's the scenario, you're, you're, it's time for class, you're on 15, and, you know, there's a jumper downtown on a bridge, and 15 is stopped. Mm -hmm. You pull off the side of the road, you pull out your iPhone, or your Android phone, mm -hmm. you bring up your Zoom app. You start your start a session, and you can hold class oh. from your car on the side mm -hmm. of the road because it works on cellular mm -hmm. internet as well. And if you have your documents, your PowerPoint presentation, and so on online somewhere, uh -huh. on like on Blackboard or on Dropbox or something like that, you can bring it up and you can share it with them from your oh. phone. Okay. Probably not something you want to do every day, <laughs> but there are circumstances where it might be real handy. The one thing you can't do from your phone, unfortunately, is what we're talking about today, is lecture capture. You can't record it mm -hmm. right, so far, but uh, that may change. Okay. Very good. So there are lots of good reasons why you might want to capture lectures. And going back to that concern that everybody has is, again, will it reduce face-to-face -face, uh, attendance? And there are conflicting, there's conflicting research on that. Okay. The, um, uh, some studies have found that there is some reduction in, in attendance. But there are others that suggest that the students who are going to skip are going to skip anyway. Yeah. You, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> whether you put it on, have lecture capture or not, and uh, that the ones who are going to show up probably will show up anyway because they're, they're either interested or sucking up. And we'll take either one. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, learn, we don't really care why. 
<laughs> and uh, as long as they show up, we don't really care why. But um, the so that's uh, that's some concern. But hey, the the real point is they get, that they get the information from the election, right? Mm -hmm. And um, this lecture capture allows you gives you another channel of communication with your students that can seriously enrich the uh, educational experience. Indeed, there's good evidence that lecture capture does enhance both retention and comprehension and success on the part of the students. And Sushila found the chat tool. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, and that talking about alternate channels of communication. I am going to try to remember to check that every, which the, the, in a minute I'm going to start sharing my screen and showing you things. And when I do that uh, in Zoom, I lose the little pop-up that comes up when somebody sends me a, a text or a chat message. Okay. So if you would do me a favor, um, if you do put something on chat, if you'd unmute yourself for a second, let me know. Let me know it's there, or better yet, just unmute yourself and ask the question. Wait till I take a breath, so you can get a word in edgewise, and just ask it. Don't stand on ceremony. I really don't mind it. I much prefer that. It shows me that you're engaged. So it's it's just and the absolute best part of these sessions is the give and take. Mm -hmm. prepared preparation or the prepared presentation I should say uh, easily should take uh, second place to that so don't hesitate at any time to speak up when you have a question it's generally much more effective if we deal with the question right then and there than it is if we wait uh, if I wait 15 or 20 minutes or so and look at the remember to look at the chat tool all right Thanks, Leslie. Okay, very good. So, uh, those are some reasons why we might want to uh, capture lectures. Let's talk a little bit about how we might do that. And the way I've decided to try to do this is to deal first with the hardware part of the issue. Okay. The computers, the microphones, the cameras, and things like that. And then we'll take a look at the software part of the system that allows you to re actually record everything that you're saying, doing, and showing to your students in the classroom. And um, the reason I want to do it that way is that if we run out of time for anything, which seems unlikely, but if we should run out of time, I'd rather leave you figuring out the software on your own because, quite frankly, the software is dirt simple to use. Mm -hmm. so, and, and we have copious tutorials um, on how to do it. So it's not like you'll be uh, bereft of information. Okay. So let's start off with the, uh, with the fun stuff, the, the toys. All right, let's see here now. I'm going to... Uh, which cameras? Forgive me if I make you seasick as I move this around. The first thing you got to have is a computer. That seemed obvious, right? Um, but that's your minimum point of entry here. A computer and a webcam, really. You, you don't strictly have to have the webcam, but that's, you'd be giving up a lot if you didn't have that. Uh, this is just a standard laptop with a webcam. And that's your minimum hardware suite. You can do lecture capture with just that. Well, a computer, a webcam, and a microphone. Sorry. Obviously, they have to be able to hear you. The um, 
we'll talk about microphones here in a moment, but generally uh, a laptop that, excuse me, a laptop that's got a webcam built into it will also have a microphone built in. Those microphones are not always the very best, but generally they, they're going to be adequate for voice uh, recording. I'm not using the microphone in my web in my laptop partly because I have other options and also partly because I happen to have a laptop that has a bad microphone on it. It's never worked very well. But some most of them are quite fine. Uh, but you're scarcely limited to that. But that that's your minimum entry point. And most all of us have that or if you're using the classroom computer in uh, your uh, in your lecture hall, all you have to do is plug a webcam into it if it doesn't already have one. In a lot of the smart classrooms that we're seeing around the colleges and continuing ed now, there is a, um, a webcam built into the monitor, into this uh, the smart monitor that they're putting in there and so on. So the chances are pretty good you'll either have one or you can just bring one in and uh, plug it in and it should work. You just plug it into a USB port and it works. And if you get a good webcam, uh, chances are it'll have a decent microphone in it as well. So that would solve both of those problems right off the bat. The uh, microphone or the um, webcam I'm using right now, let's see if I can go one camera to another here. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a few minutes. Hmm. Doesn't appear that that's, oh, I stopped my video. Why did I do that? Oh, it thinks that webcam is not ready. All right. Now I'm going to do this a different way, just a second. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do, you will use Michael. Uh, you on? All right, we're trying something, folks. We're, we're working on it. We're learning as we go along on this ourselves. Ah, Michael has a camera in the back room. We got all kinds of cameras going here. There's the webcam in question that I would recommend if you're going to buy an external webcam other than the one in your laptop. That is a Logitech C920. Let me put that on the chat. Multiple channels of communication available here. Just go to Amazon and type that in. It'll probably tell you it's somewhere between sixty and seventy dollars. So that's a Logitech C nine. What was that? Nine two zero. Nine two zero. Okay. Um, Dave, you know I have one because ah, Leslie has one. I uh, initially I was talking to Katie and uh, she said I could borrow one from you guys, so I borrowed it to just try it out. Great. And, um, so here's mine. Um, and I did get it off of Amazon. The price is very reasonable, and it's a great video camera, as well as it has a very nice microphone built right in, so then you don't have to wear the headset while you're lecturing. So I really like it. Okay, Leslie took care of that <laughs> segment of the presentation. I love it. <laughs> did a little commercial there for you. I, uh, thank you. I agree 100%. One thing that can be, uh, one trick that can be helpful um, when you're using it in a, um, a lecture capture situation and you want to capture maybe more than just your talking head, uh, like we're doing here, is to put it on a little tripod. Michael, can you pan, uh, tilt that down just a hair? We'll see, then pull out just a little bit, we'll see. I've got it on just a little, uh, uh, desktop tripod, right. about 20 bucks, and I can move it around and, uh, you know, pan, tilt, zoom, sweep, sweep around the room. 
and show you anything I want to with that. And as Leslie said, the, the video quality, and that's actually one of the best cameras I own. And um, the video quality is amazing and the sound quality is amazing. With that webcam, you can capture student responses. Say you have students sitting physically in front of you. You can capture the student responses and send them to the students on the, who are attending remotely through that microphone from as much as 15 or 20 feet away. Hmm. It's that sensitive. So that webcam is both one of the best webcams and one of the best microphones that you could buy and the whole shoot and match you get for 60 or 70 bucks. And my, uh, no, sorry about that. I think our camera battery just went. Let me get myself back here. You go get a Kleenex. <laughs> yeah, and can't do that when you're in the classroom. <laughs> All right. So, um, at minimum, you're going to need a computer with a webcam and a microphone. Let's talk a little more about microphones, just to make sure I do this somewhat systematically so I don't forget something. Uh, microphones are uh, come in a lot of varieties. The microphone built into your laptop, if you use your laptop for this, uh, is going to be quite adequate in most cases. The microphone built into the C920, Logitech C920 webcam is even better. Mm -hmm. um, but you have, uh, there, there are some disadvantages to those, uh, especially to the one in the computer. You're kind of tethered. You can't get too far from the computer. Right. Well, I've seen people stand halfway across the room and speak up and still have it work. Um, you can also, of course, and here I need to get my uh, little document camera working. Let me work on that a second because that's something I definitely want to use. Okay, that's working there. For the first time here, I'm going to demonstrate the, one of the capabilities of Zoom, which is my ability to share my screen. Uh, you can see this if you mouse over me, if you mouse over the uh, Zoom window. You'll see about in the middle of the little menu that pops up at the bottom of the screen, a screen share button. As a matter of fact, yeah. I'll show that to you in a second. But I first have to share my screen. So I'm going to do that, then I'm going to show you how that works. Okay, now I'm going to bring up the... This is a little... Uh, well, we'll talk about the document camera in a minute. We're talking about microphones right now. Another option is a USB headset. Zoom out a little bit. That. There we go. These deliver wonderful quality of sound, and they'll work on any computer, Mac, PC. Um, the obvious disadvantage to something like this is that you're uh, tethered. There's a wire suddenly, and uh, even, the, even if it's a nice long wire, if you start walking around, talking, which you can do. I mean, I'm kind of sitting static, but if I decided to stand up, Michael would zoom out. Uh, you know, he could follow me around. That's if you have the luxury of having someone to run the camera. Often, usually you won't. So, um, But this... Is certainly a good option for a microphone. This you can get good USB headset microphones from uh, Amazon in the twenty to thirty dollar range. I think this one was thirty something, um, and you can get good ones for twenty bucks. When Amazon's feeling good. You can get something similar. <coughs> And what's missing here? Is the wire. 
The wire, very good, thank you. <laughs> this is a wireless headset. This one's a little more expensive. They run 50 to to $100. But the sound's just as good. And um, the, by the way, I'm using the camera in the Logitech, uh, the microphone rather, in the Logitech camera right now. You're wondering where my sound is coming from uh, right this moment. But this works fine. Um, and you're not tethered. You can move about the room freely. It's on about a 100-foot radius of the computer anyway, without it losing any connectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, probably get even better sound than I'm getting off the Logitech camera here. But uh, the Logitech does fine. I think you're hearing me quite well, are you not? Oh, well, yes. Okay, good. Um, the, so that's another option that will keep you moving. And if you really get into this and you build yourself a, uh, a recording studio or a, uh, a lecture capture classroom, uh, you can use, let's see here, I need to swap to my, need to get out of screen share here and swap to my Logitech camera. And again, I'll show you in a minute how, how this is done, how I'm switching cameras and so on. You can also use a professional wireless microphone setup. Here's the microphone transmitter. That goes into the, the black box is a um, receiver, wireless receiver, and the red box is a computer audio interface. The audio comes out of the back of the receiver and goes into the scarlet box, it's called, and that sends it in to the computer through a USB cable. Uh, chances are pretty good that if you get really get into the gearhead thing, you're going to need a USB hub, too, because there won't be enough um, uh, USB ports on your laptop to get everything in. I've got like eight USB devices plugged in right now. If I get that hooked back on my belt before I walk away and drag it off into the floor. That's something you'd only do if you got really bitten by the bug because Whereas everything else I've shown you has been pretty reasonably priced, this setup here is about $400. But it works really well. <laughs> so it's, and, it, and you become completely untethered. You can walk into the next room. Indeed, you have to be a little careful with these things because the classic mistake is to forget that you have it turned on and go to the bathroom <laughs> and you know half a building away and it picks up just fine but those are options for microphones so there are options ranging from zero cost to in practical terms you know a little less than a hundred dollars for a microphone all right any questions about that any questions at any time just jump in Check the chat. Nope, nothing there. All right, I'm doing better at that today. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I have a tendency to forget that sort of thing. All right, go back to where you can see me. Um, now there's the issue of cameras. Again, you don't have to use a camera if you don't want to. you're more likely to need to, well, we'll talk about the, the document camera here in a minute, but you don't have to have a camera on yourself, but it's a nice thing. Or you, you, know, you may not use the camera for anything. If you are doing a PowerPoint lecture, for instance, all you have to do is bring up PowerPoint, I've been really prepared, I'm, Already have PowerPoint running. Let's pull up PowerPoint. Okay. And pull up a 
presentation here. And then just go back to Zoom and share my screen. So I'll share my screen. That's really easy, as I'll show you in a little bit. And now you're seeing my PowerPoint. I can go ahead and go into show mode. There we go. No, I don't want to record. And I can just rock and roll. Why would you need Tran? This is our, why you need uh, the online faculty, faculty certification course PowerPoint. But I can just talk and change slides when I'm ready. I can, we don't happen to have any animations built in here, but you can certainly have animations built in. You can play videos with, from within your PowerPoint, and Zoom will pick that up and send it downstream. So, hey, I'm afraid I missed that connection between when you bring up the PowerPoint, how do you project it onto that screen? Well, I have my screen shared in, oh, with you. Okay. And uh, when I, once I do that, anything that comes up on my screen, you see. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Thanks for asking that question because that, you know, these, there's so many new concepts popping in here that it, uh, um, sometimes a critical link gets broken and we're not sure how we got there. So thanks for asking. The, uh, notice that in, while the PowerPoint presentation is going, you're also seeing a little thumbnail of me talking. Mm -hmm. You can disable that if you choose. If you don't want that, I can go over here and uh, you just tell it to uh, mute either my audio or my video, which I'm not going to do right now. But uh, there's no uh, no reason you have to have yourself up there, though. It's generally a little bit more engaging for the students. And you can look, I'm looking and I see me on the screen as well, so I can tell if I'm in the frame or not. If I get up and walk away, I'll, you know, I'll be able to tell that I'm not, uh, the camera's not seeing me anymore. The, um, but that's all there is to giving a PowerPoint lecture online. And remember, we're recording all of this. So not only do they, the students who are with you in real time see and hear your presentation, and uh, benefit in every way from it, just as much as the people who are sitting in the room with you or watching it on a projection screen behind you. But they'll be able to come back and view it again as often as they like. Okay. And just play, replay the parts they want. Replay anything that doesn't make sense as many times as they like, hoping that it will get better with repetition whole nine yards. So that's that's all you have to do. And that doesn't require a webcam or any cam. But there are some cute things you can do, as you've already seen, as we've shown you things that I'm using here and, uh, and I've shown you Michael and all that. There's, there's all kinds of cute things you can do if you do have a camera. So uh, what kind of cameras can you use? Well, uh, both Zoom and Camtasia Relay, the other system to look at today, will work with webcams. Mm -hmm. It has to be something that plugs in through a USB port on your computer. So uh, the built-in webcam in your laptop is what I'm using right now. The uh, Logitech external webcam that uh, Leslie showed you and that we, you saw here, those are, those are certainly options. Or any other webcam you might buy. That anything that plugs in through a USB port will be picked up uh, by either Zoom or Camtasia Studio, and you can record the video from that. Okay. So if you were teaching an hour and a half class, right? Uh, or if you had like PowerPoints for them uh, loaded onto Blackboard already, but you wanted to go in and put your voice to some of them. So you could do that? Of course. Okay. You can do that. What, we're sh what I'm showing you here today, of course, is focused on 
you presenting live mm -hmm. and recording your live lecture. Right. But you can always just fire up one of these tools and bring up your PowerPoint, record your screen, record your voice. Right. And optionally record your you. Right. And uh, at the end of the recording, just put it online. Okay. We're gonna, you're going to see how to do that. It's dirt simple with the products, the software we're going to talk about today. And um, uh, there doesn't have to be anybody else right. listening when you're recording. But doing it this way, of course, you get the, uh, you get the best of both worlds. You're presenting to the students who have come out to see you live, like you folks. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here this morning. But I, this maybe by this afternoon, if not by sometime Monday, we'll have all this online. Okay. People who are not here will be able to benefit from. So then you can you could also go in and just do a little introduction to an online course. You could just record your your uh, your face and. Uh, a little introduction so that they kind of relate back to who the professor is, you know. Exactly. Okay. We call that technique screencasting or just uh, video recording. Okay. If screencasting, if you're recording your computer screen um, and yourself or just the computer screen or just video recording if we're just, uh, if you're just using your webcam and recording yourself, right. well, that's valuable. And that, uh, that's uh, as you know, and it's intended to be consumed asynchronously. Uh, you, your students will watch it on their schedule. Right. Whenever. Right. You put, a, you put a link to it in Blackboard, they click on the link and bam. Right. Okay. So yes, absolutely. You don't have to do this with a live audience, but you can. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's cool. Right. And think about this. Most of you probably got that email I sent out the other day, so it's you're not. This may not be a, a new idea. I hope not, but I, it's one I'm going to pound on every chance I get. Um, one of the uh, things that is, hey, Vicky. One of the things that's uh, most interesting to me about distance education is that for years the research has suggested that blended learning, a mm -hmm. mixture of face-to-face, real-time interaction, and online learning, asynchronous online learning, where people consume content um, uh, on their own schedule, right. is the best modality. It demonstrably works better than either fully face-to-face -face uh -huh. or fully online. But from a distance educator, you know, I'm a distance educator, have been for many years. From a distance education standpoint, there's a real drawback to that. What is that? Like maybe how much time would you spend online versus how much time would you spend uh, in class? That's always a... Uh, a variation blended covers a lot of of uh, situations from situations where almost everything is online to where almost everything is face to face. Mm -hmm. But if you so while so while we're on that topic, excuse me for interrupting, but while we're on the topic, no, uh, because we're exploring it at Mesa College, I just want to know: do you do you have any guidelines about that? About uh, blended about learning. how much uh, face to face and how much online. That's entirely dependent upon a number of a number of factors, the uh, instructor's preference and their facility with generating online materials. Okay. The nature of the subject. Some subjects require more synchronous, you know, uh, uh, loving touch kind of uh, right. interaction. Okay. And uh, the regulatory requirements of the school. Okay. 
there's no magic answer to that. You know, 50 okay. or 40, 30 or, or 40, uh, 60 or anything like that. Um, it's what works for you. It's really more the professor's preference and their how they function. Yes. So the state has not mandated any specific. Uh... No. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave, I have a quick question for you. Um, yes. In your, uh, you know, because you work with so many of us, um, how how successful have instructors been as far as like actually scheduling? Like, let's say you have a completely online class mm -hmm. and you um, schedule a lecture, an online lecture, you know, right. next week. My fear is that, you know, obviously like, you know, you might have a student in Afghanistan and a student, you know, wherever. Um, have, in your experience, have professors been successful with that? I mean, I know obviously you can record it, but, you know, I was just wondering about that. In other words, how many people will show up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. 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 You never know. Yeah. And uh, generally, people who are taking a fully online class don't really want to do things on their own time. That's probably the primary reason they're taking the online class. Is exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's a harder sell, quite frankly. There are all sorts of incentives you can give, from extra credit to secret information that doesn't <laughs> isn't given any other way, to uh, you know, like a a uh, well, the answer to the Question five on the next test will be C. <laughs> right. uh, so you can, there are various ways you can make it worth their while to show up. But in a fully online class, you're going to get limited uh, in, 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 or limited attendance mm -hmm. for second sessions. That doesn't mean it won't really help some students who really need it. And it's a great way, for instance, to do office hours. Right. Right. Uh, but making it a required component of a fully online class is a little, right. your, your results are not likely to be great. But here, uh, you know, going back to the blended idea, mm -hmm. okay, in a blended course, the students are obligated to be in the classroom mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time. Well, if you give them the option to attend the classroom the way you all are attending, uh, you all voted with your feet. Mm -hmm. You're at home in the office, whatever, on a Friday morning. Uh, Vicki looks especially comfortable there. <laughs> uh, and you're, you didn't have to get in the car and brave the 15 or whatever to get up here. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's a little more likely somebody might attend. You know, Absolutely. if they've got that face-to-face, -face, that uh, uh, synchronous, the requirement to attend live, this is a great way to do it. And again, yeah. but the, the point I'm sneaking up on here is that the problem with blended learning is that you're limiting yourself to your student population who's within easy driving distance. Right, right, right. I got to tell you, from years and years of, of looking, we, we see much better attendance, much better uh, enrollment in fully online classes. Exactly. Than we do in hybrid or partially online classes where students have to come to class because some of them either can't or just darn well don't want to. Mm -hmm. And they can vote with their feet too. We're not the only option in town by a long shot. So. Blended. That's why. That's why I wonder whether we should even be thinking about hybrid classes because that's such a huge drawback right there. That is a drawback. But what are we doing right now? We're having a rich, two-way, live, synchronous class. If we decide that okay, for blended classes, students can attend. The synchronous sessions, the real-time sessions, either by sitting in the classroom, and some will prefer that, certainly, or they can do it from home. Okay. Or wherever, or Afghanistan, or wherever they might be, as long as they can get to an internet connection, 
and they can do it from their phones. And trust me, the experience from the phone is just about as good as what you're getting on your computer. Oh, actually, Leslie's doing her iPad anyway. Right. So uh, it's a uh, think about it. It's like knocking out the back wall of the classroom and extending it all the way around the world. So you can have quality, real-time, synchronous, personal, two-way interactions with people wherever they are without having to have their rumps in a chair in front of you. Right. That's the really exciting thing about all this to me because there – I'm an old video conferencing guy. Oh my gosh, it's it's after ten o'clock. How'd that happen? I promise you, I'll give you a break here in a second. <laughs> but I'm an old video conferencing guy. I ran video conferencing uh, uh, services among a lot of other things for a, a small college in Georgia for a number of years, and we were able to save a number of marginal programs. We, it was a multi-campus college. And we didn't have enough students at any one of our campuses to run some programs. But by doing video conferencing, what we're doing now, uh, we were able to have like students at all four campuses attending one lecture. Right. In those days, they had to come into their nearest campus and sit in a room with other students. Mm -hmm. But we were able to make those programs work that way. We could make the classes would make if we offered them on video conference. Okay. Didn't otherwise. And there are a lot of marginal programs, folks, that might be saved. If you, you go to a blended situation like this, or you know, it could be fully synchronous. You can do anything with this from fully synchronous to uh to asynchronous, mostly asynchronous, and part just a little bit of synchronous. But uh, you can save programs that way. Mm. And you give students, that's even more important, you give students the opportunity to take advantage of that program who might not otherwise be able to. Mm -hmm. So this tech technology has been valuable for a long time, but it used to be expensive. God, am I, we had to create video conferencing rooms, and tens of thousands of dollars a room. And we had to, um, the, the technology was so complicated that we had to have a facilitator in the room with a faculty member and a facilitator at each end, other end point where the students right, right. just to keep the technology working. And even and sometimes, no matter what we did, the technology didn't work. Right. <laughs> Complicated. That always happens. Yeah. It was most of us have probably been in video conferences that just crashed and burned. Okay. And that used to happen a lot. Uh, and that crisis, you know, <laughs> when that happens, especially we got at one point at the other college, we had. 10 or 15 percent of our classes were offered that way. That's a problem. <laughs> that is a problem, yeah, okay. But the cool thing now is that the technology is cheap. As a matter of fact, for you all, it's free. <laughs> the district pays a little bit for this, but not much. You don't have to have specialized rooms. You can do this in any classroom where you have a computer and a projector and, and a microphone and a webcam. Right. And the webcam's optional. You don't have to, um, you don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars on rooms. And between you and me, there are people here at the district doing that. They're building video conferencing rooms all over the place for lecture capture. Wow. Okay. <laughs> when we have the software, we have the, you know, you have the hardware, or the, the smart classrooms usually have the hardware you need in them anyway. Right. Absent maybe a, a camera, and, uh, or maybe a microphone. 
but as we've already seen, those are cheap and easily you can bring those in yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so this can be done in any smart classroom or even a mildly dumb classroom as long as you've got a projector and an internet connection for next to nothing. And the process, as I'm going to show you here with the software here in a few minutes, is trivial in terms of cognitive load on you. It is really not something that uh, is going to intrude on your thought processes in your lectures and so on. Even for those of you who are not old enough to have given the same lecture over 500 times. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of us are getting to that point. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness, we have another attendee there. <laughs> we have a beautiful cat. <laughs> Oh, Dave, yeah. Not the first time. Dave, I have a question. Please. Um, since we in uh, continuing education have a problem with um, uh, recording hours, um, right. do, right. We, do we have a way to, um, if we're not doing a fully online class, do we have a way to record uh, how long the students uh, or any way that we know for sure that the students have been connected? You're looking at it. Or if you're in gallery view. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a, um, since we're recording all this, I know exactly that you know, right now is Fred, Rom, uh, Uriel, Donna, Vicki, Sushila, Leslie, and me. I can tell that. I just look at and Katie and uh, and uh, and Beth behind me. I can see uh, Katie munching on something over there at the back. <laughs> Hi, Katie. <laughs> Donuts! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I did forget to mention one of the serious disadvantages of attending remotely. No donuts. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dozen donuts over here. Right. Uh, Katie and Michael are eating up, uh, much to the detriment of their waistlines. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody showed up in person this morning. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> Someone's an ugly job, but somebody's got to do it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, but let's see. Where was I? The, um, the potential benefits of expanding your classroom to the world are really pretty cool. And, of course, recording it. That's the nominal purpose of today's session. But um, the, um, uh, the benefits of this are just amazing. And the hurdle to getting into doing it, both financially and learning how to do it, is so low why not? No, but I think I, I, I'm, I'm going to follow up on her question because um, say you tell the students that they have to have watched something before they come to class. Right. And then is there a way of Blackboard showing me that they logged, you know, just like a discussion board or something where you would grade them for participation, how would you be able to set it up that the Blackboard tells you whether they logged in and how long they watched it you yeah, know you, you can do uh, tracking okay blackboard on the uh on the link to the recording and you okay. can tell and we are just about to get some really powerful analytics okay capabilities for blackboard quite frankly up to now the analytics capabilities in blackboard has sucked because we didn't we couldn't afford the add-on package that gave us these ones. Oh, okay. Well, Blackboard has gotten, uh, how to put it, Blackboard has come to Jesus because... Uh, because they know you're going to go to Canvas otherwise. They're afraid we're going to go to Canvas. You've got it. There's nothing like having a fulcrum. What did Archimedes say? Give me a fulcrum and a place to stand and I will move the world. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we got a fulcrum now, a big lever. 
and they cut our costs in half for the next two years over what we've been paying. Wow. And while Canvas may be free or may not in the future, we don't know. And if it's not free, we don't know what it's going to cost. Right. My board is really sharp in the and they've made it possible for us to buy that analytics package. It's coming online sometime in the next couple of months. And once you have that, you're going to be able to tell an awful lot more about what your students have done. Not only whether they've accessed something, but how long they spent at it. Mm -hmm. Now that, of course, doesn't tell you that they didn't just turn it on and leave their dog or their cat. Watching. Yeah, yeah, but you gotta trust them. I guess you know uh, right. you can't police them all the time. Yeah. But did that answer the question about the continuing ed? Um, I wanted to say that Don Aragon told me that he, after he assigned somebody to watch some video, uh, he actually has a little quiz. Uh, with questions to make sure that they actually listen and watch the video. Um, and I thought that was a pretty good idea. Yeah, that's another classic strategy. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and make, you know, put enough teeth in it that they're terrified not to watch it. Mm -hmm. And I had an, uh, I know a, a, an engineering technology faculty member and I, uh, flipped his class, geez, 13 or 14 years ago now. And he had what I thought was a brilliant solution. When students came to class unprepared, he, he had been teaching for a while, so he could spot that in the New York Minute. He had this little ghetto in the back of the room where there were computers with headsets that went over the years. He made them go back. It was a laboratory type of situation. It was a kind of right. an, open, uh -huh. an open lab kind of situation. He made them go back and watch the videos before he let them do their work. Uh -huh. leave, leave that day. And after about the first two weeks, he didn't have to do that anymore. Rarely. Unless somebody had a genuine problem, they'd been sick or their computer broke or something like that. But then they had that option. But I, I thought that was ingenious on his part. So there are lots of strategies uh, that you can use in inverted instruction and class flipping to um, in motivate the students to uh, watch or read or engage with the material before they come to class. Will those strategies ever be 100% effective? No way. <laughs> no chance. But that doesn't mean that it won't work overall. Because, to, you know, it, it, students, after, a, it's, a, it's a pretty bad experience to walk into a class where you're supposed to have watched the lecture before you come in, and the instructor is setting up, you know, work groups, and people are working on projects or on homework, and the instructor's walking around and engaging with everybody and so on. It's a classic, uh, class flipping sort of activity, but making really active use of that face-to-face -face time. And of course, all the research tells us that active learning is where the, you know, is, is much more effective in, in generating long-term co comprehension. Um, to be in that environment and not be prepared is extremely embarrassing and uncomfortable. And some students bear up under that extremely well, but <laughs> uh, most of them will not. It, it's not an experience that most people will um, will perpetuate. The um, the the most likely scenario in a case like that is that after an experience or two like that, the student will drop. Right. And uh, far be it for me, I don't know if you've been keeping track of the controversy in the Chronicle about Mount St. Mary's College. Far, far be it for me to say anything about drowning bunnies or anything like that, but you know, we might be doing them a favor if we motivate, if they just don't want to be there and just not participating, they'd be better off probably dropping and while they can still get a refund. 
I don't know about the others, but I have to say that I think at least in our department, we're all, that, that is the biggest challenge we face is that no matter how many extra points we give and stuff like that, the students do not want to open the book or at least watch the PowerPoint so when they come to class, they can answer some questions. Yeah. I hear you. And I um, wish I had a magic solution to that. I sure don't. But there are things you can try. And there are things that will work, but they'll never work with everybody. Right, right. And let's face it, there's a certain percentage of students who will get it, pass the tests, and actually learn something in spite of what we do. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. uh, we'll depend on those. And there are some who you will never reach, no matter what you do. And we're trying to focus on the people in the middle who yeah. we can help. And those are the ones we have to teach to. So, uh, unfortunately, the technology can't eliminate that problem. But it can give you other options to both motivate and to reach students who you might not otherwise be able to. So, great discussion. This, this is what it's all about. Uh, this is what I really miss and totally asynchronous learning. I, I just think that there needs to be some leavening of any learning experience with synchronous activity, or at least the opportunity there for. You know, with all this emphasis, at least on our campus, about student success and equity and stuff like that, I think this is uh, an important strategy that uh, we probably need to explore more and, uh, you know. And it's something oh, we can I'm do sorry. I was just without say, an Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, I was just going to say I, I totally agree with you because um, out of the five classes that I teach, four are completely online. Um, and I, I miss the connection with my students because, mm. you know, there, there are days I could be on campus walking past 20 of my students. Right. I know who they are. And so, you wouldn't know that, yeah. Yeah, so I think um, not only, you know, as instructors, we miss it, but then having something like this can can foster them feeling a little more connected to you, so then maybe they'll also be a little more motivated. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember uh, I was at something Hank Beaver was at, and I, I too did not like to have my face showing while I was doing like little videos. I don't either. Yeah, but he said, which was really a valid point, if a student comes to class, they see you. So okay, I'll bite the bullet, and, you know, it's a lot of times in the videos, I, you know, they're going to see you, so um, I think it just adds to that connection, so many times in a video, I'll have myself just like this, just a little, you know, down at the bottom of the screen while I'm doing, like, a screen capture, mm -hmm. but, you know, I think it helps with that whole connection, but I miss it, so. Yeah, that's true, valid point. Yeah, I do so much uh, communicating with people over email. It's such a treat to see you all. I know. <laughs> Webcam's turned on because it, you know, it's, it feeds my soul. Mm -hmm. And it's easy. And it's cheap. We don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to do this. We can do it in practically any class. So I always have to bring my soapbox. <laughs> I think we all do, you know. <laughs> That's part of who we are as professor, uh, instructors, you know. Right. Well, thank you. And this, this kind of back and forth is what it's all about. I think now, or was I? We've seen, um, well, it's 10.30, my goodness. You all need a, need a five or ten minute break? Yeah. Hey, Dave? Yes. It's Donna. Hey, Donna. And I'm still in my pajamas, so you're definitely not going to be seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> Another advantage. There you go. Remote <laughs> to video conferencing. You all have to be dressed from the waist down, right? Or yeah. waist up, rather. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. It's 1030 on the dock right now by my clock. Uh, I always 
hate to break because I never know <laughs> who's coming back. But let's say, you want to say uh, 1040, we'll reconvene. Yeah, absolutely. Get a cup of coffee and so on. All so right. How, how do you put this on uh, pause or something? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it? Okay. All right. See you in a few minutes. Great. And I'll answer any questions they might have, whatever, though it's it's nice for everybody to hear it. Probably. So and I'm gonna go get a donut too, and I'll be I'll be within hearing distance if anybody has a question. Oh god, there's a lot of donuts here, Michael. You know what I've seen to notice when taking all my all my sessions or whatever? It just takes one person to get the conversation going. And when everyone's fully invested in it, that's that's like what I just saw. That's when the engagement seemed to go up. Like you were saying, the, the level of energy just picked up right there. That was awesome to see. That was awesome to see. It was just really exciting, isn't it? Yeah. That was really to know that you can do this and people can be anywhere in the world. And they can still get that energy. Yeah, Michael is um, comes from us from San Diego State. You know, you already have your yes. master's degree in instructional technology from San Diego State, just like Katie and Paula. He was interning with us for a for a time, and it's really sorry. It's really okay. interesting to see. Um, People in the same boat talking about the same issues. Being in that kind of environment, it's like, whoa, that's that's cool to see. Just just to see that in person or uh, all together. Mm. Let's see. What I'm mm. Obviously, I don't need to go up. Jeez. Too bad we can't have virtual donuts, Dave. Oh, just <laughs> That's okay. I'll forgive you one day. It's obvious I don't need it. <laughs> I couldn't afford the skinny camera. N none of us need it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Only if we had those, uh, like the cameras at the um, the fair or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> Yeah, you, if you bring, if you narrow your aspect ratio so that the width is much less than the height, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. Unfortunately, the effect is only temporary, <laughs> not to mention illusory. Right, right. I did have a quick question for you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously, I teach uh, computer classes, so I do have. Um, I've been wanting to put more lecture type of videos online. Like I do have some that are just kind of more concept specific, like here's how you do this in Excel or what have you. But um, my main fear is the time factor. Like is it, you know, is it the best idea? Like if I'm going to be lecturing, let's say on chapter one, should I break it up into like four sections or something like that? Is that the best way to do it? Generally, it's better to have shorter, more shorter videos. Mm -hmm. Right, and just do like part one, part two, part three, something right. like that. Yeah. And you can do things like put them together in a playlist on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Right. So that there's a natural progression. If somebody wants to watch one after another after another, they, right. they can do so very easily. Okay. Yeah, I have playlists set up on my YouTube channel. Um, just for, you know, like um, certain classes or what yeah, have but you. But shorter is better. Yeah, that's been my main... Um, There's some research that suggests that after seven minutes you've lost half your audience. Yeah, yeah. That's one of my big things that I have to really work on is um, not being too wordy <laughs> and, you know, being a little more succinct. But wouldn't be surprised if that number is a little lower <laughs> being conditioned that way now. Yeah. Um, Yeah, none of us would be teachers if we weren't enamored of the sound of our own voice. 
<laughs> let's face it. Yeah, I know. And we fight against that all the time. Right. Right. So I do, you know, sometimes I write scripts, but sometimes I feel like if I'm trying to follow the script, I come off as not, you know, it doesn't flow as well. So I guess just an outline would be good just to kind of make sure you're hitting all the ideas. Yeah, the real benefit to me of making the script is that you organize what you want to say. <laughs> you know, right. you're, not gonna, you're less likely to forget something important. Right. And your, your extemporaneous lecture is going yeah. to be much more concise to the point and better organized and so on. Right. But trying to read from a script while recording a video, yeah. especially if you're recording your computer screen, right. is very difficult. It is difficult, yeah. I know people who actually, who, when they're recording their screen, who go through and record the screen first without audio. Okay. And then go back and talk about it, you know, play it back and record over it. Right. Uh, do to do a voiceover. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I, I just can't do that. I, it just doesn't yeah. work for me. But I know people who swear by it and, and who use it very effectively. Okay. Yeah. But having a script, at least having an outline, right, is pretty right. important. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All good things to keep in mind. <clears throat> oh my God, how to get to be 1037. I've got to take care of something. I'll be right back. <laughs> I <did one. laughs> Cat is becoming an active participant. Mm -hmm. No cats. They uh, own the house. They go where they want. Oh yeah, especially. I I think I'm saying that's a calico. Uh, no, no, he's not. Oh, he's not. Uh, he no, it is not a calico. <laughs> no. Oh, there he is. 